All right, so we first of all have our stomach model here. We can see the top of the stomach where the esophagus leads in, and this is the cardia. We then have the bulging top region of the stomach right here, which is the fundus. The bulk of the stomach along this length is the body of the stomach, and it ends at the pylorus of the stomach. Now if we open the stomach up, we can see the pyloric sphincter located at the back end of the pylorus. Inside the stomach, we can see these numerous folds or rugae. If I put the stomach back together, we can see on the inner curvature, we have the lesser curvature of the stomach here, and on the outer sweep, we have the greater curvature of the stomach right here. Now if I switch gears over to this model here, I have now our small intestine and large intestine models put together. If I put the stomach briefly in place, just so you can see where it would sit, and then remove the stomach, we can see, first of all, we can see the pancreas behind the stomach with the pancreatic duct running along it. We can also see the duodenum, the beginning, the first tube of the small intestine. Now if I open, remove this little portion here, we can follow the duodenum along and look in this little window where we can now see all the green bumps which form the duodenal papillae. The, duoden or the small intestine continues to snake around. Eventually, somewhere in the middle, we get to the jejunum, which is the mid part of the small intestine. And finally, it ends at the ileum. Now, there's more to the ileum than this, but it sort of represents itself most easily at that point right there. Now, the ileum leads into the large intestine via the ileocecal valve. This initial region where the large intestine is entered is called the cecum, and dangling off the cecum we have the appendix. We then have the ascending colon, the hepatic flexure because it sits under the liver, the transverse colon running across, the splenic flexure because it sits under the spleen, and the descending colon going down. At the bottom we have this curvy little S-shaped region which is our sigmoid colon which eventually leads to the rectum. Now in here we have this large sheet of mesentery, which we can see as the white located in this particular region here. Now if I put the piece of small intestine back on top, we can see there's a fat pad that dangles down from the stomach, and this region right here is our greater omentum.